Humanity's first brush with the Galactic Empire unfolded not through a grand meeting or dramatic battle, but via a lonely probe drifting aimlessly at the fringes of the Milky Way. This probe, part of Earth's deep space exploration fleet, had been designed to survey distant star systems, silently collecting data to send back to its creators. It was a mission expected to yield nothing more than geological readings and potential astrobiological insights. However, what it captured instead was a message that would forever alter the course of human history. The transmission, intercepted as the probe passed through a rarely explored sector of space, was stark and unnervingly concise. Run. Initially dismissed as a possible glitch, the message repeated in a loop, each iteration more forceful than the last. The probe's instruments confirmed it was no error. Someone or something was deliberately broadcasting this warning across the cosmos. Back on Earth, the transmission caused a flurry of excitement and apprehension. Scientists and military experts pored over the data, attempting to trace its origin. It didn't take long to confirm that the signal came from a region of space known for its mysterious silence, where stars seemed to dim unnaturally, hinting at the presence of a vast and advanced civilization. The message's simplicity and the power behind its delivery suggested a technology far beyond human understanding, and its implications were chilling. As the news of the transmission spread, it ignited a global debate. Some viewed the message as a hoax or a misinterpretation of natural signals. Others saw it as a clear warning from a superior force, advising humanity to steer clear of a cosmic empire that brooked no interference. But there were also those who saw it as a challenge, a spur to advance human technology and prepare for potential contact or conflict with this unknown empire. The leaders of Earth's nations found themselves under tremendous pressure to respond. The United Nations convened an emergency session, drawing representatives from every spacefaring nation to discuss the potential threat. The meetings were tense, with every decision weighed against the possible consequences of provoking a galactic power. Meanwhile, the public's imagination ran wild, fueled by sensational media coverage and the proliferating theories of experts and laypeople alike. Amidst this whirlwind of activity, a secretive group of military strategists and space experts formed a contingency council, spearheaded by General Harlan Cade. Cade, a seasoned veteran of space operations, argued for preparation over panic. He pushed for an increase in defense spending, the acceleration of deep space weapons programs, and the establishment of a planetary defense coalition. His view, which gradually gained support, was that Earth should not and would not run. Instead, it would prepare to stand its ground, should this galactic empire ever decide to turn its eyes towards humanity. This preparation took on various forms. Across the globe, governments began ramping up their space programs. Satellites with dual research and defense capabilities were launched at a breakneck pace, while scientists worked feverishly to develop technologies that could shield Earth from potential surveillance or attack. Every resource was directed towards ensuring that if the empire behind the message decided to move against Earth, humanity would not be caught off guard. Thus, in a mixture of fear, defiance, and an unyielding drive to protect their home, Earth's people stepped into a new era. The unknown loomed large and menacing over humanity's collective future, but armed with the warning they had received, they were determined not to flee but to face whatever challenges came their way. This was the beginning of a new chapter in human history, one marked not by the exploration of space as a final frontier, but by the preparation for a possible confrontation that could define their very survival. Weeks after the initial ominous message, Earth's observatories detected a massive fleet appearing near Jupiter. The fleet, comprising dozens of gargantuan ships, dwarfed any human-made structure and sent shockwaves through the global community. The ships belonged to the Xiphorians, a species whose technology and presence seemed as ancient as the galaxy itself. Their appearance alone was enough to silence those who had doubted the veracity of the warning. The Zephorian fleet did not attack, but instead, Commander Vrex, their leader, broadcast a stark ultimatum across all channels. Earth must either evacuate or submit to Zephorian rule. He spoke with a calm authority, his voice carrying the weight of an empire used to obedience. This is not a war he declared. It is an expansion. Resist and be swept away. Yield and survive under our governance. 
The transmission was punctuated with a live feed showing Xyphorian ships effortlessly dismantling a rogue asteroid with terrifying precision, a display of their technological prowess. This ultimatum united Earth's fragmented nations out of sheer necessity. Emergency meetings were convened around the world, with leaders and diplomats working tirelessly to form a unified response. The notion of fleeing their own planet was unthinkable for most, and submitting to alien rule was equally abhorrent. A spirited defense became the rallying cry for humanity. General Harlan Cade, already a prominent voice for preparation, was appointed as the head of Earth's newly formed Planetary Defense Council. In this charged atmosphere, Earth's response was a flurry of military mobilization and scientific endeavor. Nations pooled their resources, sharing technology and information at an unprecedented scale. Military bases were repurposed overnight into training camps for a new kind of soldier, one prepared to fight not just on Earth, but in space. Meanwhile, scientists and engineers collaborated on adapting existing technologies for combat against the Zephorians. Traditional weapon systems were overhauled with enhanced capabilities, while research into electromagnetic pulses, which could potentially disable alien tech, was fast-tracked. At the same time, Secret teams of linguists and diplomats sought to understand and possibly communicate with the Xyphorians, seeking any advantage or insight. Every broadcast from the Xyphorian fleet was analyzed, with Earth's best minds decoding linguistic patterns and cultural nuances. These efforts revealed the Xyphorians as a deeply hierarchical and expansionist culture, adhering to a rigid code that viewed the annexation of other planets as a divine right. The world also turned its eyes to space in ways never before imagined. Every satellite and space station was repurposed to surveil the alien fleet, providing critical data on their movements and capabilities. Children and adults alike watched the skies with a mix of fear and fascination, as human-made and alien technologies faced off in the vast arena of space. Amidst this organized chaos, Captain Mira Santos emerged as a key military figure. An experienced pilot and tactician, she was tasked with leading the experimental squadron equipped with the latest in stealth and weapons technology. Her orders were clear. Test Earth's new defenses and gather as much information as possible without provoking a full-scale attack. As Earth braced for the unknown, the mood was one of determined defiance. Humanity would meet this galactic challenge head-on, fueled by a newfound unity and a desperate hope that their preparations would be enough to defend their home. The stage was set for Earth's first real test as a player on the cosmic stage, facing an empire that had never known defeat. As the deadline set by Commander Vrex approached, Earth's preparations intensified. The skies above major cities and strategic locations now bristled with newly installed defense systems, a visible symbol of Earth's readiness to defend itself. Meanwhile, Scientists and engineers worked around the clock, developing countermeasures against the advanced technology displayed by the Xyphorian fleet. The first test of Earth's resolve came sooner than expected. The Xyphorians launched a calculated strike on Saturn, aiming to sever Earth from its outer solar system resources and to demonstrate their overwhelming power. The target was not only strategic, but symbolic, aiming to demoralize Earth by showing the futility of resistance. Captain Mira Santos, was at the forefront of Earth's response. She led a squadron of the newly developed stealth fighters, designed to evade the Zephorians' advanced sensory equipment. The battle unfolded in the rings of Saturn, a chaotic ballet of rock and ice providing both cover and hazard. The human pilots used the rings' dense debris fields to their advantage, executing hit-and-run attacks against the Zephorian ships. The Zephorians responded with lethal precision their energy weapons slicing through the debris and occasionally catching a human fighter in their deadly beam. But the humans learned quickly, adapting their tactics in real time. Santos proved herself a cunning leader, drawing the enemy into the denser parts of the rings where their larger ships were less maneuverable. Here, Earth's new EMP torpedoes were deployed, their bursts disrupting the Zephorian shields and navigation systems just long enough for human fighters to strike critical blows. Back on Earth, the battle was broadcast live. The sight of human ships darting through the celestial storm of Saturn's rings, holding their own against a superior enemy, galvanized public support for the war effort. People around the world watched, their fears mingled with a growing pride in their planet's capabilities and the bravery of their defenders.
Despite their tactical ingenuity, Earth's forces suffered losses. Several fighters were lost to the void, their pilots hailed as heroes who had stood against the might of the Xyphorian Empire. Santos herself narrowly escaped a deadly trap, her ship limping back to base with significant damage. Yet the engagement at Saturn was a minor victory for Earth. It was the first time the Xyphorians had encountered significant resistance, forcing them to reconsider their view of human capabilities. In the aftermath, Earth's military used the data gathered during the battle to improve their strategies and weapon systems. Each skirmish provided invaluable lessons in the capabilities and limitations of both Earth's and the Zephorian's technologies. General Harlan Cade, overseeing the war efforts from Earth, noted each lesson with a strategic eye, planning for the inevitable next encounter. Meanwhile, Special Operative Lana Zhao, who had been observing the battle from a covert operations base, prepared her team for what would be one of the most daring missions of the war. Their objective was to infiltrate a Zephorian warship. The intelligence gathered during the battle at Saturn had revealed potential weaknesses in the enemy's communications array, an opportunity Zhao was determined to exploit. The siege of Saturn marked a turning point. Earth had shown that it would not fall easily, and the Xyphorians now understood that conquering this new foe would cost more than they had anticipated. For Earth, the battle was a harsh but necessary baptism by fire, forging a new determination to survive and eventually repel the galactic threat that loomed over them. In the shadow of their narrow victory at Saturn, Earth's military strategists, led by General Harlan Cade, realized the need for more audacious tactics. Cade, recognizing the importance of intelligence in this escalating conflict, greenlit a high-risk, high-reward operation, infiltrating the Zephorian flagship. This mission would fall to Special Operative Lana Zhao and her elite team, known for their expertise in covert operations and electronic warfare. Zhao's team underwent rigorous preparation, studying the designs of captured Zephorian technology to devise a way aboard their flagship. The plan involved the use of a modified Zephorian shuttle, salvaged from a previous skirmish, now retrofitted to mask its human signature. The team's goal was twofold. Gather critical intelligence on Zephorian operations and, if possible, plant a virus in their command network to disrupt their communication systems. As Zhao's team approached the Zephorian fleet, cloaked in the shadow of a comet to avoid detection, tensions ran high. The success of their mission was pivotal, potentially providing Earth with the upper hand needed to negotiate from a position of strength, or better yet, drive the Zephorians back. The infiltration was tense but initially successful. The team, cloaked in stolen Zephorian armor, moved silently through the corridors of the massive ship, marveling silently at the alien technology surrounding them. Their destination was the central data hub, a nerve center of the Zyphorian fleet's operations. Along the way, they encountered minimal resistance, their disguises holding up under scrutiny. However, as they neared the data hub, the complexity of their mission increased. The hub was guarded by advanced security protocols and AI-driven sentinels, that required a delicate touch to bypass. Zhao and her tech specialist, a young genius named Elliot Kim, worked in tandem to navigate these obstacles. Kim manipulated the security algorithms while Zhao provided physical cover, neutralizing any threats that slipped through the digital cracks. Once inside the data hub, the team's hackers quickly interfaced with the Zyphorian system, siphoning off vast amounts of data, fleet movements, command protocols, even encrypted communications that hinted at the Empire's broader strategic objectives. Kim then initiated the second phase of their plan, embedding a sophisticated virus designed to slowly degrade the communication capabilities of the Zephorian fleet. The escape was more perilous than their entry. The Zephorians, alerted to anomalies in their network, began a ship-wide manhunt for the intruders. Zhao's team fought a running battle back to their shuttle, their path complicated by the now active internal defense systems of the flagship. Every corridor and junction became a potential ambush point, testing their combat skills and their resolve. Despite the odds, the team managed to reach the shuttle and blast away from the flagship, though not without sustaining injuries and severe damage to their craft. They limped back toward Earth's lines, pursued by Zephorian fighters. Back on Earth, General Cade and his team monitored the operation with bated breath. 
When Zhao's damaged shuttle finally cleared the conflict zone and made it to safety, there was a palpable sense of relief mixed with triumph. The data stolen from the flagship provided Earth's forces with a treasure trove of intelligence, and the virus began to show its effects almost immediately, causing confusion and disarray within the Zephorian fleet. This bold operation marked a significant turning point in the war. It showcased the bravery and ingenuity of Earth's defenders, and demonstrated that the Zephorians were not invincible. Earth's forces could now exploit the cracks in the Empire's armor, planning their next moves with better insight and renewed confidence. The war was far from over, but for the first time, victory seemed within the realm of possibility. With the intelligence gathered from the Zyphorian flagship and the initial effects of the virus causing confusion within the enemy's ranks, Earth's strategic position was significantly bolstered. General Harlan Cade, analyzing the wealth of data provided by Special Operative Lana Zhao's daring mission, identified a critical vulnerability in the Zephorian supply chain. The rare mineral that powered their energy weapons and cloaking technology was sourced from a small number of planets, all heavily guarded but not invulnerable to a well-planned assault. Cade decided that striking these supply lines would cripple the Zephorian war effort, reducing the frequency and effectiveness of their attacks and giving Earth much-needed breathing room. He convened a strategy meeting with his top military advisors and representatives from Earth's allied extraterrestrial civilizations, who had begun to offer support, swayed by Earth's resistance and courage. Together, they planned a series of coordinated strikes on the Zephorian mining operations. Captain Mira Santos, celebrated for her tactical acumen at Saturn, was chosen to lead one of the key missions. Her target was a mining facility located on a remote asteroid in the belt of Orion, a critical node in the Zephorian supply network. The operation was dubbed Starhammer, and it involved a fleet of specialized spacecraft equipped with stealth technology and electromagnetic pulse, EMP, weapons, designed to disable the Zephorian's defensive systems temporarily. As the fleet neared the asteroid, the challenges of the mission became apparent. The facility was protected by a network of automated defense satellites and patrolled by a squadron of Zyphorian fighters. Santos's approach was cautious, her ships cloaked and navigated through the asteroid field that surrounded the mining facility, using the natural debris as cover from enemy sensors. The initial phase of the attack focused on taking out the defense satellites. Using precise EMP blasts, Santos's team disabled the satellites before they could trigger an alarm clearing the path for their assault on the facility. Once the external defenses were down, the human fleet launched a full-scale attack. Fighters and bombers swooped down on the mining facility, unleashing a barrage of lasers and missiles. The battle was intense, with Zephorian defensive forces responding with their own heavy artillery. The mining facility, set against the stark backdrop of the asteroid, became a fiery battleground as explosions rocked its surface. Santos maneuvered her ship through the chaos directing her forces with calm precision and adapting her tactics on the fly as the Zyphorians attempted to regroup and counterattack. Meanwhile, a small team of commandos deployed from Santos's ship infiltrated the facility. Their mission was to plant explosive charges and gather any additional intelligence on future mining operations. This part of the mission required not only brute force but also finesse, as the team had to navigate through enemy-controlled corridors and avoid detection by security systems still operational despite the EMPs. Back on Earth, the success of Operation Starhammer was watched closely. When news of the mission's success reached the planet, it ignited a wave of hope and renewed determination across human territories. Not only had the mission severely disrupted the Zyphorian supply line, but it also demonstrated the effective coordination between human forces and their new alien allies, showcasing the potential of this growing coalition. The destruction of the mining facility on the asteroid marked a significant victory in Earth's campaign against the Zephorian Empire. It was a testament to human resilience and ingenuity, proving that even a technologically superior enemy could not guarantee victory against determined resistance. As the war continued, these coordinated strikes became a crucial component of Earth's strategy to deplete the Zephorians' resources and force them into a defensive posture, setting the stage for future engagements that would further test the metal and unity of Earth's defenders. Following the success of Operation Starhammer, the tide of the war began to visibly turn in favor of Earth.
General Harlan Cade, encouraged by the disruption of the Zephorian supply lines and the accumulating setbacks inflicted on the enemy, planned to capitalize on this momentum with a daring new strategy. His goal was to sow discord within the Zephorian command structure and further cripple their operational capabilities. To achieve this, Cade initiated Operation Silent Echo, a series of covert operations aimed at intercepting and decrypting Zephorian communications. The intelligence from these operations would potentially expose weak links and internal conflicts within the Zephorian hierarchy, which Earth could exploit. Captain Mira Santos was again pivotal to this operation. Her fleet was equipped with advanced electronic warfare suites, capable of intercepting transmissions and injecting false orders to create confusion among Zephorian forces. As the operation unfolded, Santos's ships stealthily positioned themselves in the shadow of moons and minor planets near key Zephorian outposts. There they waited patiently, scanning for communications and waiting for the opportune moment to strike. The operation required precision and a deep understanding of Zephorian communication protocols a task made easier by the data previously secured from the Zephorian flagship. The operation paid off when Santos's team intercepted a series of transmissions detailing a planned large-scale assault on a strategic human outpost. Using this information, Santos orchestrated a counter-operation that not only thwarted the attack, but also led to the capture of several high-ranking Zephorian officers. These prisoners provided further valuable intelligence on the Zephorian command structure and revealed growing dissatisfaction among their ranks with the prolonged conflict. Emboldened by these successes, Earth's military leadership expanded their operations to include psychological warfare. Broadcasts of Zyphorian defeats and testimonies from captured officers were disseminated across known Zyphorian communication channels. This propaganda was designed to demoralize the enemy troops and stir doubts about the infallibility of their commanders. Meanwhile, Special Operative Lana Zhao continued her missions behind enemy lines, targeting Zyphorian communication hubs and supply depots. On one critical mission, her team infiltrated a Zyphorian logistics base, planting explosives and leaving hidden surveillance devices that provided ongoing intelligence about enemy movements. These missions were perilous, with Zhao and her team often operating under extreme conditions to ensure their success. Back on Earth, the continuous flow of victories and the influx of captured enemy technology spurred further advancements in human capabilities. Engineers and scientists reverse-engineered Zephorian tech, integrating it into Earth's defense network. This integration not only enhanced Earth's defensive capabilities, but also allowed for the development of new weapons systems that were soon deployed on the front lines. As Earth's strategic position strengthened, so did its diplomatic efforts. General Cade, recognizing the importance of solidifying the newly formed alliances with other civilizations, worked tirelessly to forge a united front against the Zyphorians. These alliances brought fresh resources and perspectives to the human war effort, creating a multi-species coalition that stood in stark contrast to the increasingly isolated Zyphorian command. The cumulative effect of these operations was profound. The Zyphorian Empire, beset by internal strife, logistical nightmares, and an emboldened enemy began to show signs of significant strain. Their responses became less coordinated and their offensives less frequent and effective. On Earth and across human territories, there was a growing sense that victory, once a distant hope, might actually be within reach. The war was far from over, but for the first time, the end seemed conceivable, and humanity dared to envision not just survival, but triumph. With Earth's forces now seizing the initiative, General Harlan Cade set his sights on a decisive campaign designed to significantly degrade the Zyphorian's ability to wage war. The campaign, named Operation Stellar Hammer, aimed to target the Zyphorian's remaining operational bases and their fleet's main assembly points across the galaxy. The strategy was clear. Strike at the heart of their military strength and force the Zyphorians into a position where they would have to negotiate or face inevitable defeat. The plan involved a series of simultaneous attacks across multiple systems, coordinated with meticulous precision and relying heavily on the element of surprise. The Earth Coalition had grown, now including several other alien races who shared a common goal of checking the Zyphorian advance. This diverse coalition brought new capabilities and technologies to the fray, 
enhancing the strategic options available to Earth's command. Captain Mira Santos was tasked with leading the assault on the primary Zephorian shipyard located in the Viridian system, a key site for the construction of their warships. Santos and her fleet prepared for what was arguably their most challenging mission yet. The shipyard was heavily fortified, surrounded by defensive platforms, and patrolled by one of the largest Zephorian fleets observed since the beginning of the war. The approach to the Viridian system was fraught with danger. Santos's fleet used nebulae and asteroid fields for cover, moving closer to the target with each maneuver. Meanwhile, stealth units were deployed ahead of the main fleet to disable external sensors and communication arrays using sophisticated hacking tools developed from the technology obtained in previous missions. The main assault was a spectacle of tactical prowess and bravery. Santos's fleet emerged from the cover of a dense asteroid field directly into the shipyard's defensive perimeter. The battle was fierce, with Earth's forces engaging Zephorian defenders in intense combat. Earth's ships, equipped with advanced shielding and armaments, managed to penetrate the outer defenses, allowing boarding parties to seize control of key facilities within the shipyard. Concurrently, similar operations were underway in other critical locations. Zhao led a covert team on a sabotage mission against a Zephorian logistics hub, planting explosives that crippled the enemy's ability to distribute supplies. Elsewhere, coalition forces engaged Zephorian fleets, capitalizing on the chaos caused by Earth's focused attacks on their logistical and manufacturing capabilities. Back on Earth and its allied worlds, the news of the ongoing battles was met with bated breath. Civilians and soldiers alike watched as updates streamed in, showcasing the daring exploits of their fleets and soldiers. Each victory served to boost morale and solidify the resolve of the coalition, while each loss was mourned and used to fuel the determination to push forward. As the battles raged, the effects of the campaign began to show. The destruction of the Viridian shipyard dealt a devastating blow to the Xyphorian war effort, significantly reducing their ability to replenish their fleet. The simultaneous strikes on their logistics and communication networks caused widespread disarray and confusion among their ranks. In the aftermath of Operation Stellar Hammer, the balance of power had shifted unmistakably. The Zephorian Empire, now reeling from the coordinated attacks, found itself on the defensive, struggling to maintain control over its territories. The once unstoppable force that had demanded Earth surrender was now grappling with internal dissent and a war effort that was clearly faltering. The success of these operations marked a pivotal moment in the war. Earth and its allies had not only survived the Zephorian threat, but had turned the tables, proving that unity and ingenuity could overcome even the most daunting of foes. As they prepared for the next phase of the war, there was a renewed sense of optimism. The possibility of peace and victory, once a distant dream, was now within reach, and Earth stood at the forefront, ready to lead the galaxy into a new era. The decisive victories achieved in Operation Stellar Hammer had brought the Xyphorian Empire to its knees, significantly weakening their hold across the galaxy and fracturing their command structure. With the Xyphorians now vulnerable, General Harlan Cade and the Earth Coalition saw an opportunity not just for victory, but for a lasting peace that could prevent future conflicts. The final confrontation was planned, not just as a battle, but as a strategic move towards negotiation and reconciliation. The Earth Coalition, with General Cade at the helm, prepared for a two-pronged approach, a final military strike that would definitively end the Zephorian capacity for war, coupled with an offer for peace talks. Cade believed that the combination of military pressure and a diplomatic olive branch would convince the Zephorians that surrendering and negotiating were preferable to total annihilation. Captain Mira Santos was tasked with leading the final assault. Her target was the Zephorian command station in the Alpha Centauri system, which served as the Empire's last major operational stronghold. The station was a fortress, equipped with the Empire's most advanced defenses and housing their remaining top military leaders, including Commander Vrex. Simultaneously, Special Operative Lana Zhao and her team were deployed on a covert mission to infiltrate the command station. Their goal was to secure the command center and capture Commander Vrex, hoping to use his capture as leverage in the forthcoming peace negotiations. Zhao's team used stealth ships to penetrate the station's perimeter defenses. 
dodging sensors and guard patrols to make their way into the heart of the enemy stronghold. The battle for Alpha Centauri was intense. Santos led her fleet with the precision and bravery that had become her hallmark, engaging Zephorian defenders in a fierce conflict that echoed through the system. Earth Coalition forces, now seasoned veterans of space warfare, fought with a coordinated efficiency that overwhelmed the remaining Zephorian ships. On board the command station, Zhao and her team faced intense resistance. The Zephorians, aware that their command center was the last line of defense, fought desperately. However, the expertise and determination of Zhao's team paid off. They managed to breach the command center, capturing Commander Vrex after a brief but intense confrontation. With Vrex in custody and their main command station overtaken, the Zephorian military was effectively paralyzed. The remaining fleet commanders, realizing the futility of continued resistance, ceased fire and awaited instructions from what remained of their government. Following the capture of Rex and the securing of the Zyphorian command station, General Cade immediately initiated communication with the Zyphorian political leaders, offering them terms for surrender and inviting them to peace talks. The terms were firm but fair, designed to dismantle the Zyphorian military capabilities while providing assurances that the Zyphorian civilization would be treated with respect and given a place in the galactic community. The negotiations were tense with the future of the galaxy at stake. However, the prospect of further bloodshed seemed pointless to all involved. After days of negotiations, a peace treaty was signed aboard the very station that had been the last bastion of Zyphorian resistance. The treaty called for the dismantling of the Zyphorian war machine, the liberation of their occupied territories, and the establishment of a multi-species governance council, with Earth and its allies playing significant roles. The treaty marked the end of hostilities and the beginning of a new era of peace and cooperation in the galaxy. Earth had not only defended itself against a formidable foe, but had also emerged as a leader in forging a new path for interstellar relations. The war, with all its devastation, had brought about unexpected alliances and a newfound hope for a unified galactic future. With the formal signing of the peace treaty and the end of hostilities, Earth began the monumental task of rebuilding and forging a new future, not only for itself, but for the galaxy at large. The war had left deep scars on many worlds, and the process of healing and reconstruction was a daunting one. However, the same spirit of resilience and cooperation that had enabled humanity to prevail in the war now guided its efforts in peace. General Harlan Cade, having successfully led Earth's forces through the conflict, transitioned into a role that was less about military command and more about diplomatic leadership. He was instrumental in establishing the Multi-Species Governance Council envisioned in the peace treaty. This council was designed to ensure that no single species could dominate others and that the mistakes leading to the Zephorian conflict would not be repeated. The council's first task was to oversee the disarmament of the Zephorian military installations and the integration of Zephorian territories into the galactic community. This process was complex, requiring sensitive handling to ensure that the Zephorian population, who had lived under an expansionist and militaristic regime, were treated fairly and given a voice in the new political landscape. Meanwhile, Earth's recovery was bolstered by the influx of alien technologies and knowledge gained during the war. Scientists and engineers from various species collaborated to adapt this technology for civilian use, leading to advancements in energy production, medicine, and environmental restoration. Cities on Earth and other human colonies began to showcase a blend of architectural styles and technologies, reflecting the new, diverse influences that had come to characterize human society. Captain Mira Santos, hailed as a hero of the war, took on a new mission that symbolized humanity's new role in the galaxy. She was appointed the commander of the Unity, a starship designed as a mobile diplomatic platform. Her mission was to travel to various worlds, particularly those scarred by the war, to promote healing, offer support in reconstruction, and foster a deeper understanding among the galaxy's diverse inhabitants. Special Operative Lana Zhao, who had played a crucial role in the war's final moments, was tasked with leading a special unit within the Council's peacekeeping forces. Her team's mission was to address any lingering pockets of resistance or piracy that had sprung up in the power vacuum left by the collapse of the Zyphorian military. Her operations, however, 
were conducted with a focus on reconciliation and rehabilitation rather than pure enforcement. Throughout this period of reconstruction and peacebuilding, cultural exchanges flourished. Art, music, and literature from different worlds found new audiences, enriching a shared galactic culture. Festivals and celebrations, often featuring displays of traditional crafts and performances from multiple species, became common, symbolizing the unity that the Council sought to build. On Earth, the annual Remembrance Day became a solemn but hopeful event, commemorating those lost in the war, but also celebrating the peace that had followed. It served as a reminder of the costs of conflict and the value of peace, reinforcing humanity's commitment to their new role as galactic peacebuilders. As the years passed, the scars of the war faded into history, and the galaxy entered a period of unprecedented prosperity and cooperation. Earth, once on the defensive against a vast empire, had emerged as a beacon of hope and a leader in a galaxy that was learning to move beyond its violent past towards a brighter, unified future. As peace and stability flourished across the galaxy, Earth and its allies embraced their roles as architects of this new era. The influence of humanity was evident not only in the political and diplomatic arenas, but also in the rapid technological advancements and cultural exchanges that now defined interstellar relations. Captain Mira Santos, aboard the starship Unity, became a symbol of Earth's commitment to galactic unity. Her missions took her to distant colonies and worlds, each with unique landscapes and challenges. On each planet, the Unity facilitated projects ranging from ecological restoration to the construction of educational facilities, helping to knit a tapestry of diverse species into a cohesive community. Mira's charisma and genuine interest in alien cultures endeared her to their populations, making her a beloved figure on countless worlds. Back on Earth, the integration of alien technologies had transformed daily life. Cities boasted vertical gardens that purified the air, energy systems that were nearly 100% sustainable, and public transport systems that utilized anti-gravity and hyperspeed technologies. Education systems had been revolutionized to include galactic history and xenolinguistics, preparing future generations for life in a multi-species society. General Harlan Cade, now a senior advisor to the Galactic Council, focused on nurturing the young political structure to ensure it met its ideals of fairness and representation. Under his guidance, the Council established the Galactic Court of Justice, which served to arbitrate disputes between species and systems, ensuring that the rule of law prevailed over the might of the military. The Xyphorians, under the terms of the peace treaty, had restructured their society. With Earth's help, they transitioned from a military-industrial complex to a more diversified economy. The former warriors found new roles in research, art, and diplomacy, contributing their strength and resilience to galactic endeavors. The cultural exchanges with the Xyphorians also brought about a broader understanding of their values and ethics, which had been overshadowed by their former leader's imperial ambitions. Special Operative Lana Zhao, leading her peacekeeping force, dealt with the remnants of the old Zephorian regime and other factions that threatened the new order. Her approach, however, was not merely enforcement, but rehabilitation. Her team worked to integrate former combatants into the galactic community, offering them roles in peacebuilding projects which significantly reduced recidivism and helped heal the scars of war. On Earth and across the galaxy, Annual Unity Festivals became a highlight of the cultural calendar. These events were marked by exhibitions of technology, art, and culinary delights from various worlds, celebrating the achievements and potential of the unified galaxy. Each festival was hosted on a different planet, promoting a deep sense of community and shared destiny among the diverse inhabitants of the galaxy. The legacy of the conflict with the Zephorians had evolved into a story of triumph over adversity a narrative that emphasized resilience, cooperation, and the pursuit of a common good. Humanity, once seen as a fledgling species on the cosmic stage, had proven itself a capable and compassionate leader, guiding the galaxy not towards conquest, but towards a shared prosperity. In the years that followed, as Captain Santos returned from another successful mission, she looked out at the stars from the Bridge of the Unity. Each point of light represented not just a world of possibilities, but a story of partnership and peace. 
The galaxy, once riven by war and strife, now pulsed with the vibrant energy of a community united, a testament to what could be achieved when diverse beings work together for a greater good.